Hello, this is the Bible in Fewer Words. We are Carol and Steve Wells. This is episode 246, Matthew chapters 24 and 25. Hi, Steve. Hi, Carol. We have a lot to cover in not much time. That's right. (laughs) So maybe we should just go. I think so. All right. Chapter 24. Then Jesus left the temple and said to his disciples, Everything that you see here will be completely destroyed. His disciples said to him, When will these things happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? Jesus said, Many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and many will believe them. There will be wars and rumors of wars, but it won't mean the end has come. There will be famines, disease, and earthquakes. These things are just the beginning of sorrows. You will be afflicted and killed, and will be hated by everyone because of me. Many will stop believing and will betray and hate each other. False prophets will deceive many. Evil will be everywhere, and love will be rare. But whoever endures to the end will be saved. The gospel will be preached throughout the world, and then the end will come. When you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, then whoever is in Judea should run to the mountains. If you're on a housetop, don't come down to take anything from your house. If you're in a field, don't go back to get your clothes. And woe to pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. Pray that it doesn't happen in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great suffering, worse than any the world has ever seen or will ever see. If it lasted, no one would survive. But God will end it before his favorite people die. If anyone tells you, Here is Christ, don't believe it. There will be many false Christs and false prophets who will show great signs and wonders. So many, in fact, that God's favorite people would, if it were possible, be deceived. When the Son of Man comes, it will be like lightning that comes from the east to the west, because eagles will gather wherever there's a dead body. After the time of suffering, the sun will darken, the moon won't produce light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly powers will be shaken. Then the Son of Man's sign will appear in the sky. All tribes will mourn, and they'll see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory. He'll send angels to blow a trumpet. Then they'll gather his favorite people from the earth's four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Learn the fig tree parable. When its branches sprout new leaves, summer is coming. When you see these things, it's about to happen. This generation will still be alive when all these things happen. Heaven and earth will end, but my words will last forever. No one knows when these things will happen, not even the angels, but only my Father. The coming of the Son of Man will be like in the days of Noah. Before the flood, everyone ate, drank, and got married until Noah entered the ark. They didn't know the flood was coming until they all drowned. It'll be like that when the Son of Man comes. There will be two in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding One will be taken and the other left. So watch out and be ready, because you'll never know when your Lord will come. If a man knew when his house would be robbed, he'd watch and be ready. So be ready, because the Son of Man will come when you least expect it. Who is the faithful and the wise servant? Blessed is that servant who will be watching when his Lord comes. He will put him in charge of all of his things. But the evil servant says, My Lord is late in coming. So he hits his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunk people. The Lord of that servant will come when he least expects it, and he'll throw him in with the hypocrites while they'll cry and gnash their teeth. That was a lot of talk without talking. (laughs) Yes, it was. We did pretty well there, I think. (laughs) Okay, so now our listeners are probably sleeping. Well, I don't know. I thought that was pretty exciting because that's telling us how the world's going to end and how we'll know that it's coming. From Jesus' From Jesus. Words. Of course, he said that the people that were listening to it, it would all happen within their lifetimes. So 
It didn't seem like it worked out that way. No. (laughs) But I guess we just have to go on to the next chapter. Okay. (laughs) Chapter 25. When Jesus continued his speech to the disciples, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five were wise and five were foolish. The foolish virgins took lamps with no oil in them. The wise virgins had oil in their lamps. The bridegroom was late, so the virgins went to sleep. At midnight, someone cried out, saying, The bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. So the virgins got up and got their lamps ready. The foolish virgin said to the wise, Hey, give me some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise virgin said, No way. There isn't enough for all of us. Go buy some yourselves. The bridegroom came while the foolish virgins were out buying oil. So the wise virgins had the bridegroom to themselves, and the door was shut. Later, the foolish virgins came and said, Let us in. But the bridegroom answered, saying, I don't know any of you. Watch out. You don't know when the Son of Man will come. When a bridegroom comes to these ten virgins, Uh it looks like he just went in a tent and that's it. It was consumed. I mean, it was consummated. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But now it looks like a man can have ten wives. Well, that was okay in the Old Testament law, right? Okay. And Jesus has said before that every jot and tittle of the Old Testament law still applied today. So he has never said anything against... Multiple wives. Yeah. So there's that. But yeah, that's kind of a troubling aspect of this, is Mm -hmm. that it seems like Jesus is at least okay with the idea of a man having ten wives. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Seems strange to me. Okay, so the next thing is, why do you need these lamps? That I don't know. Well, it was dark. Okay, is the oil really for lighting a lamp? I don't know what the oil was about, but you need to be ready. I think that's the point. Yes. Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. You need to be ready. All right. Verse 14. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who entrusted his money to his servants while he traveled to a faraway country. He gave five talents to one servant, two to another, and one to a third. I want to just say one thing here, and that is that a talent is a lot of money. Oh. A talent was about 30 kilograms of silver. So five talents would be a fortune. This is a parable, and we're going to learn a lesson here. That's right. Yeah, I think so. Let's, Let's try to figure out what that is. Okay. The servant with five talents invested them and made five more talents. The servant with two talents earned two more. But the servant with one talent hid it in a hole in the ground. When their master returned, he asked them about the money he'd given them. The servant with five talents said, You gave me five talents. I've earned you five more. The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've done well with a few things. I'll make you the ruler over many. Enter into my joy. That's a weird thing to say. (laughs) Yeah. The servant with two talents said, You gave me two talents. I've earned you two more. The master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've done well with a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into my joy. Okay, he could have said that to those two (laughs) guys at the same time. The servant who received one talent said to his master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping what you don't sow. So I was afraid and hid your talent in a hole. Here it is. His master said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap what I don't sow, which doesn't sound like a compliment to me. (laughs) Yeah. So you should have invested my money so I would profit from usury. Take the talent from him and give it to the servant with ten talents. For whoever has something will be given even more, but whoever has nothing will have even that taken away from him. Cast the servant who didn't make any profit into the outer darkness, while there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can we talk about that? Yeah, I think so a little bit. (laughs) If the servant with the one talent Mm -hmm. was scared that he might lose it gambling or something to try to make him more money, I think it was wise of him just to hang on to it. In the end, the guy just wanted his money back. Apparently not. He expected more than his money back. 
with he, other people taking all the risk, because what would have happened had he lost it in the bet? He's a hard man. He reaps what he doesn't sow, right? He's saying, yeah, yeah you should have known that I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I expect you to give me more than I gave you. That does seem like a very strange thing. Yeah. What are we learning here from this parable? I think the point of it is that if God gives us gifts... Qualities that, of character? Yeah, and so we should use those gifts in a way that, that benefits him. Live your life in a way that glorifies God, right? Oh, okay. And or if you're a good speaker, you might proselytize and convince people to become... Christian, yeah, I or, think that's what he's talking about. And get more glory for God because he needs a lot of glory. I, I guess that's it. I, I don't know. This seems to have some real moral problems in it. Um, that the expectation seems unreasonable. The punishment just seems absolutely cruel and totally yeah. unreasonable. Yeah. He gave him money to hold for him mm -hmm. while he was gone, and then he returned the, the same money when he came back. Seems like he did his job. Yeah. He didn't say to invest it. And what would have happened if the stock market crashed or he invested it in, in crypto or something? And, and then actually that would probably have been worked out well for him. But it might. <laughs> but you, After you, a long you never while. but you never know. The value could fall to nothing. Yeah. Investment is risky. And yet he's insisting that they invest it. It's just the whole thing just doesn't seem to hold up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I hate it. Yeah. All right. But we need to go on. Yep. Verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in all his glory, all the nations will be gathered in front of him, and he'll separate them as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. So which one is the better one there, a sheep or a goat? God likes sheep. Oh, okay. He has a thing against goats. I don't know why. <laughs> he'll put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. He's also right-handed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then the king will say to them on his right hand, Come, you blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you at the beginning of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to eat. And you gave me something to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I was a stranger, and you let me live with you. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous people will say, Lord, when did we feed you when you were hungry? Or give water to you when you were thirsty? When did we see you as a stranger and take you in? Or naked and give you clothes to wear? Or visit you when you were sick or in prison? The king will answer them. Whenever you did it to the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Then the king will say to them on his left hand, Get away from me, you cursed people. Go into the everlasting fire prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't let me live with you. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. The cursed people will say, Lord, when did we not feed you when you were hungry, or, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? The king will answer them, saying, Whenever you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. These will go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Yeah. That was a lot of text to cover. It was, but I just want to talk a little bit about this last parable. Uh-huh. This last parable has some nice aspects to it, right? Yeah. It's saying that you'll be rewarded if you're kind to others. Yep. If the judgment is going to be fair, this would be the way that judgment might make some sense, right? So it's basically, if you're good to others, then you're going to be rewarded. If you're not good to others, then you're going to be punished. Mm -hmm. That seems reasonable. Yeah. But the problem is it's taken to an extreme. In dividing people into sheep and goats, good and bad, it's not that, that's not the way it is. We're all kind of a mixed bag. We've got some sheeps, sheepishness and some goatishness. Well, I, I don't even want to use that because I don't know what the heck that's about. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds kind of cool. <laughs> it does sound kind of good, but you you can't you can't separate us into two categories: good, good or people bad. and bad people. Yeah, I agree. And even if you could, okay, so you're going to reward those people that are kind, but you're going to punish those with eternal torment and fire, where there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth forever, because they were cruel. You're going to be even crueler to them than you're saying than you're accusing them of being in their life. Yeah, and people change. 
they might learn. They might become more sheepish. Well, yeah, you'd think that God could show them that, you know, really, this is the way you should behave. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I didn't make that clear before. But this is the way that you you should behave. Yeah. I think that the idea of the, the sheep and the goats and, and the, the heaven black and, and white. hell and the black yeah. and the white, no matter how that's determined, is unfair, unjust, and unreasonable. Well said, Steve. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we got through two long chapters today. We did. And we are going to move on next time. Okay, thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. And listeners, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.